With Mr. McKenna's learning, it's learning of a different kind. With Mr. McKenna's learning, I hope that you might find something new that you have never tried before. Just some stuff to stop your brain from getting bored. No! <laughs> Just some crunching up. Well, hi, you who, good morning. Follow me out my back door. Something a bit different today. Um, into my yard and uh, I don't know if you can see, but behind me, I'm very excited about this. I'm speaking in the quiet tones because it's still quite early. And also it adds a little, um, little ambience, a little atmosphere, doesn't it? Can you see in the background there? I've got a little bit of a setup, a rig, uh, something I've made and it's worked and I've only tried it. I've tried it lots of times. This is only the second time. So what I'm actually doing, although I'm not showing you anything to do yourself today, I'm showing you something I can't, basically I've got to share this. So excited I can't not share it. Um, but there are things we can learn from it, okay? That thing behind me there is a moth trap. Don't worry, they're not getting hurt. This is recording, it's for nature. But I want to share with you how cool and beautiful moths are, because we know so many people know so little, including me. And this is the start of my learning journey. Come on, do it with me. Come on, you're, you're watching the video now. You can't turn off now. Come on, come and see what I caught last night. Right, let's have a look at you. So, uh, a quick look at what's involved here. Um, ultimately, this is the most important part. This is a light bulb. And the moths are drawn to the light because they are nocturnal. They are nighttime fires, most of them. And then when they're here, they flap around for a bit and then they might get a little bit bored. And then they slide down, I've created these little slides here and into the box that I've built. Now in the bottom there, you can see some, can you see the egg boxes here? Some leftover ones here. I've filled the bottom with egg boxes and then they hide away and took themselves away for the night. Once they've had enough flapping around, they like little dark corners. Then in the morning, I come and look at what we found. I can record what I found. What I'll do then is I'll send those records off um, and we'll then be able to monitor better uh, just exactly what species exist in all the different parts of the country in my area. Oh, excited. Should we have a look at what moths are called? Come on, let's have a look. So here's the thing. A little bit like mushrooms, which obviously I like a lot. It's, um... oh, do you know what? Stop talking. Let's just get a moth out. Come on, Mr. McKernan. Get a moth out. So here's the first one. Oh, it's beautiful. Right, we have to get some there. There we go. That's the most beautiful moth. And that's called the Hebrew character. It's called the Hebrew character because it has this beautiful solid black marking on the side, which looks like one of the letters from the Hebrew alphabet, uh, Nun. I think it's in Arabic as well. Maybe, I don't know how it's pronounced, but Nun, N-U-N. Uh, and that's how it how it looks, how it's written in the Hebrew alphabet. So that's the marking of this moth. Beautiful. I caught three last night. Let's have a look at the second species. Egg box from uh, Cheatham Academy's kitchen there. And here it is. It's in. It's tucked away. This one. <gasps> this one's gorgeous. Here it is. This is a Quaker. And down at the bottom near my thumbnail, the bottom part has like a kidney shape, marking as a circle above it and a kidney shape underneath. And it's the same on both wings. So that's how I know that's a Quaker. Now, which type, I'm not sure, because this is quite a diddy one. Oh, my giddy heavens, look at this. <gasps> look at that. You are. Look at that. And that is called the early grey. Those two sticky out bits at the front there. Those bits at the front there, there it's legs. And I spent a little bit of time this morning with a cup of tea on the bench and my book and tried to find the markings like a little game, a little treasure hunt. And I found it and that makes me feel good. So learning new things, that's one of our well-being things, isn't it? One of our things to do, our five things. Learning something new is a great feeling because every time I put this out, there might be something new for me each morning. So today, it's the early grey moth. How wonderful. I will say one thing. Mrs. Carter, our principal, paid for me to buy these materials because I was going to build this at school with some of the children. I've obviously not been able to do that now, but I'd already bought the things ready to take into school. So, you know, to one for the team. I built it anyway, so I've got Mrs. Carter to thank. When school starts again, we'll be starting a moth club. And hopefully we can start to catch lots of moths at school. <gasps> Write your name on a list if you want to join. Oh, let's hope it's a big list. So although you might never have a moth trap like this in your garden, you can actually build a very simple one, which would be a cardboard box and a bright torch shining at woods, and the moth might be attracted. If you push in the cardboard sides, you can make a little slide that they'll drop into. A couple of egg boxes in the bottom. You never know, it might happen. So you could try that at home. 
But if we're thinking about daytime, anyone who might have a garden or a bit of a yard with some bushes, some wildflowers or weeds in there, if you put out just a bowl of sliced up oranges, that can act as food for butterflies. And there's quite a few springtime butterflies flying around at the moment. So there's a little something you can try if you've got a garden uh, or a yard at home. Okay. But for today, the star of the show were moths. Oh, take care of yourselves and each other and the wildlife and the moths. And if you notice, he's also got a cool Mohican, this early grey guy. Look at that smart, isn't it? Look at his Mohican. Cool.